This message is not for the fearful, cowards, or the unbelieving. If you fall into either of those categories, stop this message now and pass it on to someone else. This is Shirley J. N. Johnson, August 3rd, 2021. This is part two of Hypocrites. So after looking at Jonathan Cain's bio, I decided to go on the internet. I just typed in, is rock music demonic? I know it is, but I just wanted to see what would come up. And this article came up. It's titled, The Curse of Demon-Possessed Musicians by David J. Stewart, March 2006, updated July 2014. It's from the website, JesusIsSavior.com. Now I'm just going to jump around in this document and read some of this stuff. The document says, the sexuality of music is usually referred to in terms of rhythm. It is the beat that commands a direct physical response. There you have it. Just like I said, it's the beat of the music. Just because you put Jesus' name in all that demonic uh, music, it does not make it Christian. It's not Christian rock and it's not Christian rap. Let me continue. Music with the heavy, hard beat. God, listen, listen carefully, people. Music with the heavy, hard beat got the name rock and roll when a disc jockey coined the term from sex in the backseat of a car. The rock beat is Satan's sound of lawlessness. The rock beat is musical perversion. Listen to this. Listen. Every knowledgeable musician... Now, we know that Jonathan Cain must be a knowledgeable musician. He's been with Journey for since 1981, and he played with some other groups even before that. So we know he's a knowledgeable musician. Every knowledgeable musician knows that the term rock really means a shameful act of lust. But that is not the only problem, exclamation mark. The beat of rock is nothing new. Pagan animistic tribes had the rock beat long before it came to America. They used the driving beat to get high and bring them into an altered state of consciousness. Traditional drumming and dancing techniques are designed to achieve the shamanic state of consciousness. You see, the beat is a vehicle for demon infestation. But did you hear what the article said? The very term rock really means a shameful act of lust. And every knowledgeable musician knows that. So Jonathan Cain knows that. And all these other ones. But he's claiming to be a Christian still. Let me continue to, to read. In the following statements, rock musicians testify of an outside power that has taken over them while writing and performing rock music. Some of them have actually identified this power as demonic. Now, these are the statements from the musicians themselves. Rock has always been the devil's music. You can't convince me that it isn't. I honestly believe everything I've said. I believe rock and roll is dangerous. I feel that we're only heralding something even darker than ourselves. That was a statement by David Bowie, Rolling Stone, February 12, 1976, page 83. Listen carefully to this next, this next statement. The original recording of I Put a Spell on You was done. They wrote this song after the Screaming Jay Hawkins and his band members got drunk and some type of presence seemed to seize him. He began grunting, growling, screaming, gurgling in strange unknown tongues and wildly dancing around the studio. Heartbeat of the Dragon, page 40. See, after they got drunk, some type of presence seized him and he began to growl and all that stuff and speak in unknown tongues. See, now there you have it. He began grunting, growling, screaming, and gurgling in strange unknown tongues. Now that's what I've told you about Paula White and all these other people that you'll be seeing up there on uh, Word, Network, TBN, and all them claiming to be speaking in tongues. It is satanic. That stuff you hear T.D. Jakes. If you haven't uh, seen my video here on YouTube, it's called T.D. Jakes and Paula White Satanic Tongues. Go watch it. I'm going to read that again. Now listen to the name of the song. 
the original recording of I Put a Spell on You. After he got possessed by some type of presence and he starts speaking in these unknown tongues and gurgling and screaming, he got up and wrote a song that says, I put a spell on you. See, it's satanic. Satan had put a spell on them. These, these are satanic tongues. Listen to these next clips. But before you listen to these next clips, plead the blood of Jesus Christ over yourself. Rande eke seka rama kathi kata rabandi eke sike para paso toria kashanda. Enda nama ka atarobi kiti asika. Ela la lo mosika ni na na mona na la shiki ti asa koya bata. Reti asia yo to ya manta ya ndia kasaya. Rakati aso ria kati anda na na mosole eke eka shanda ya koto ho mata. Isina na na mokoso. Hey, Elder Fuller, I want you to come forward. We're going to pray for Pastor Paula right now in the name of Jesus. All the ministers and everybody, I want you to reach your hand forward. In the name of Jesus, as we have Elder Fuller come up and pray over our pastor. Remede se caramande, redise remedo so coramande sacrabrete, redise ramande cahate, rido ramande sarebenta, rondos rebeta caraba baba rebeta, rondo se kerebeta, rondo se kerebeta, roba da rebeta caha, reba baba rebeta. Oh, 
que meita o rapa de seque ronda sua carinha de indo sua carinha meita o ronda sua carinha do o bacai do carbate rindo sua carinha de o bata sua carinha do rindo sua carinha de o bata sua carinha do rindo sua carinha de and we call it done in Jesus name hallelujah counterfeit tongues and what they're doing is totally unbiblical in the first place read 1 Corinthians chapter 14 I'm going to go there and I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures but you can go and read the whole thing for yourself 1 Corinthians chapter 14 let's go to verse 23. If therefore the whole church be come together into one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come into those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that ye are mad? See, Paul was telling them, those that are supposed to be speaking in tongues. He said, you don't do that in the church, in public. He said, because when you do that, if somebody comes in there that are not Christians, they don't understand the Bible or whatever, they're unbelievers, they're going to think you people are crazy up in there. All of you are in there babbling in something that nobody understands. Those, these people are crazy. So what they're doing is totally unbiblical. Let's go back to verse 1. It says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. See, nobody understands what you're saying. So why are you out there speaking this that no man understands you but God? Again, he says, you're doing this stuff in public, and people think you're crazy. You're not saving any souls. You're not bringing anybody to Christ. They don't know what you're saying. Now, he's supposed to be praying for Paula. She doesn't know what he's saying. So why are you carrying on like that? You're praying for her, but she doesn't understand the words you said. And further on in this chapter, Paul talks about interpreting. Interpreting tongues. If you're going to speak in it, interpret. Tell them what you said. Nobody interpreted anything. Here's another um, statement. It says, We receive our songs by inspiration, like at a seance. That was Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones. Rolling Stone, May 5th, 1977, page 55. Now let's listen to this next clip of Paula. Then the fourth thing, you ready? I knew you'd love coming to church today. You've got to become a fan of the Rolling Stones. Now I'm serious. You ready? Go ahead, play my song. Come on, you better sing it. Don't act like you've always been saying. I wish I could sing. Get what you need. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mark, can you pick it up real quick? Uh-oh, he picks that up way too fast. Virginia, he ain't been in church all the days of his life, huh? So watch what he's saying. You can't always get what you want, but you get what you need. And I'm being serious right here. You go, Pastor Paul, I can't believe you do that. Well, Mick preaches you a message right there that says you've got to ultimately trust that everything you go through has a learning lesson and a process that it's making something better in you and developing something. And I trust the process even though I don't like the process. I know that you should be singing, oh, Hosanna right now. But sometimes i got to sing a little bit of Mick that reminds me. I know I don't like the rest of those verses, so I pick and choose just my verses for it. But I, I pick and choose that I don't always get what I want. Come on. But I get what I need. See, she's a fan of the Rolling Stones and played some of that satanic music in the church. And she told them that they need to become fans of the Rolling Stones as well. And she has always said that she likes rock music. And did you hear what she said? She said that Mick was preaching to them a message. No, he was not preaching. He was just singing rock music. Simply because he made a statement that may have made some sense, it doesn't mean that he's preaching. Keep listening because you're going to hear 
what Jimi Hendrix said about hypnotizing people with rock music and then preaching into their subconscious what the rocker wants to say. Keep listening. Let's go to another statement. Robert Plant and Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin both claim that they don't know who wrote their occultic song, Stairway to Heaven. See, it's an occultic song, and they named it Stairway to Heaven. Plant testified, Pagey had written the chords and played them for me. I was holding the paper and pencil, and for some reason I was in a very bad mood. Then all of a sudden, my hand was writing out words. I just sat there and looked at the words, and then I almost leaped out of my seat. Davin C, S-E-A-Y, that's how he spells his name, I'm not sure how he pronounces it. Davin, D-A-V-I-N, S-E-A-Y. Davin C, Stairway to Heaven, page 249. Another statement. Carlos Santana has his own personal demon god, little g, named Metatron. Here's another disturbing excerpt from Rolling Stone magazine. Metatron is an angel. And obviously, it's a fallen angel, which God calls demons and Satan. Satana has been in regular contact with him since 1994. Carlos will sit here facing the wall, the candles lit. He has a yellow legal pad at one side, ready for the communications that will come. It's kind of like a fax machine, he says. March 16, 2000. Next statement. It's amazing that it... It meaning the tune to In My Life. It's amazing that it just came to me in a dream. That's why I don't profess to know anything. I think music is very mystical. That was a statement made by John Lennon. The Beatles come together. Reader's Digest, March 2001. Here's another statement. The music to yesterday came in a dream. The tune just came complete. You have to believe in magic. And we know magic, again, is satanic. It's of the devil. I can't read or write music. That was Paul McCartney. Interview on Larry King Live, CNN, June 12, 2001. Now, Paul McCartney said he wrote the music to yesterday. He said it just came to him in a dream. He doesn't even know how to read or write music. But after his dream, he got up and just wrote the music to it. Now listen very carefully to this next clip coming up. Listen to what Paula is saying here. What we've even been seen created, you don't think that you can be used to partner with God to make a difference in this earth? Listen, you're a child of the Most High God. And that's what I'm trying to say. Baby, you were used by God even when John... He's into it right now. You are used by God when you begin to write faithfully. He didn't know. People go ask him and interview him all the time. Almost all of his songs. He thought, he's like, he knew. He says now, it was the Holy Spirit coming upon me. He was in the bus. And he was driving down the road in the bus. And the sun was setting, right? Play a little faithfully. <laughs> Don't act like y'all haven't ever. Come on, made out with your girlfriend. Boy. All right, come on. Yeah, all right. See that? I just went real quick in another direction. Keep playing, babe. Keep playing it. And you sit in a bus. Play it, baby. Seriously. And the Holy Spirit comes upon him. And he writes down. Shay, he writes down. What's the, what'd you write, baby? You wrote down, I'll get it. Here, I wrote it down so I'd make sure that I knew it right. You wrote down two lines on a napkin. Two lines. Midnight sun, right? Midnight run. Highway run into the midnight sun. You wrote that down on a napkin. The will, round and round, you're on my mind. He wrote down two lines on a napkin. Do it, baby. And he goes and sits in his hotel. And he says, all of a sudden, something comes over him. And literally in a half hour, play it. Because everybody's heard it. 
because it brings us to familiar feeling y'all know y'all made out to this one at least I told him before I ever married him I said baby I made out with somebody to your songs he goes don't worry people had babies and everything else I'm like okay it's under the blood and I'm trying and in 30 minutes you wrote this without a Steve Perry without a Neil Sean because God did use all of them together but you wrote this alone, sitting there in 30 minutes without one single struggle. When your father died, you thought you were writing everything for your father. And he said, I'll never be able to write again because him and his dad, Lenny, were so close. He goes, I'll never be able to write again now that my dad, my father is gone and has died. And right then he receives a letter from his auntie his auntie says, John, basically, I love you and I'm so proud of you. You have harvested the seeds of your father, capital F. And it hit him in that moment. I never was writing for my father, Leonard. I've always been writing for God. That God's the one that has always inspired me. God is the one that always gave it to me. And so every time he's got nominated for a Grammy or won Rock and Roll Hall of Fame or got their star on the Hollywood sidewalk or got the million awards that they've gotten and all the money and everything else that everybody might go oh, so glamorous but there's also a price that goes with that he says I did this because God came on me you don't think God can give you a song you don't think God can give you a book. You don't think God can give you a business idea. You don't think God can give you an invention. You don't think God can give you a policy. You don't think God can give you a fix to our education. Now, did you hear that? That's blasphemy. That's blasphemy. She blasphemed the Holy Spirit. And the Bible tells you, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there is no forgiveness in this life or in the next. But she said that Jonathan Cain was sitting on a bus... And she said, the Holy Spirit came upon him. Then she said, he went to the hotel. Right after that, he got off the bus, goes to the hotel, and then something came over him. Now that may be the truth. Something, something came over him. And in 30 minutes, she said, he wrote the whole song without any struggle. And pretty much the same thing happened to the man who got drunk, something came over him, and he starts speaking in unknown tongues, and then he gets up and writes a song. Then you have Paul McCartney, who can neither read nor write music. He has a dream, wakes up, and then he writes a song. And then here's Jonathan Cain. He's sitting on a bus. Something comes over him. He goes to the hotel and writes a song in 30 minutes without any struggle at all. And I would think that it would take more than 30 minutes to write a song. I believe some of these people might take months to get that song down pat and to get it to just right. But Jonathan Cain does it in 30 minutes with no struggle. Now, if that was the Holy Spirit, like I said, the creator of all the universes, the one and only true and living God or the Holy Spirit that came upon Jonathan, he would have written clearly. A gospel song you would have known clearly it wouldn't have been no guessing as to if it is a gospel or is it just some music you would have known clearly it would have been a gospel song not a secular song which everybody was making out and having sex to if it was from the true and living God whenever they heard that song they would have been praising God not making out and having sex and if that had been the Holy Spirit that came upon him that day as Paula said, blasphemy, Jonathan Cain would have changed. He would have dropped out of that band. He would have started writing gospel music right then and there. And he would have continued on being a gospel singer, a saved man, attending church, uh, doing praise and worship back then. But you see, like I said, since he hooked up with this con and has joined in her long con, now they want to claim that he's a Christian rock star. No such thing, people. Now, I want you to hear some statements made by Jonathan Cain himself. One is from 
Parade, I guess it's Parade Magazine. Um, this article was written April 30th, 2018, and it was written by M.B. Roberts. The interviewer is asking the question. The interviewer asked him, So, besides touring with Journey, you've made Christian albums and worked with your wife? This is Jonathan's answer. It's been a trip doing this worship music and playing it all over the world with Paula and ministering with her. I play behind her and outline her sermons with this lovely music that just comes to me. I don't know where it comes from, but I always said it was kind of like my God time on the piano. See, now that sounds almost identical to what the other rock stars said. Now, if Jonathan Cain was so anointed and was a Christian, he'd know where it's coming from. He'd say that's coming from the Holy Spirit, like his wife Paula says. And he agrees with her when she says that. He doesn't correct her. He doesn't say, oh, no, it wasn't the Holy Spirit. I don't know where it came from. He said, but I always say it was kind of like my God time on the piano. And the music that he plays when Paul is preaching, most of it sounds real witchy. And, it's, and it just, it's just irritating, really, to me. But he says that's his God time on the piano. So when he's off in the studio writing his secular rock music, is that his Satan time on the piano then? Let's go to another statement he made. This is from The Federalist. This article was written by Josh Shepard, December the 18th, 2017. He also was interviewing Jonathan Cain. Now, Josh is saying, Journey still draws thousands to their live shows. Now, Jonathan Cain says, Some nights we transform into the old band, says Cain, especially now that Steve Smith is back. It had been almost 30 years since he played with us. It really brings back the magic. And we know magic is of the devil. This next statement. This is by Ginger Baker, drummer for the popular 60s band Cream. She said, it happens to us quite often. It feels as though I'm not playing my instrument. Something else is playing it. And that same thing is playing all three of our instruments. That's what I mean when I say it's frightening sometimes. Maybe we'll all play the same phrase out of nowhere. It happens very often with us. Bob Larson, Rock and the Church, page 66. That's where that statement came from. Now listen to this next clip of Paula. I promise you, their thoughts, their views, their, their, their persona, like in electricity, a contact is a passage through which electricity flows. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be, everyone thinks this is just for marriage. This is not about marriage, it's actually talking about the temple of God. I mean, this is true for marriage, but it's much beyond this. People think this is just about marriage, like, oh, we aren't to be unequally yoked, and y'all go unequally yoked anyway. I'll be like, she hot. Oh, she cute. Ooh, justice of peace. Run down, get married, then you come back. Pastor Paula, will you bless this mess? No. Will you bless this? No, I'm not going to. No, I'm not going to. You go, why? Because God didn't ordain that. Now, I'll walk with you through life. I'll, I'll do all I can to help. But no, you did this out of order, so I'm not just going to bless this. Let's come back and find out foundationally. Let's, let's try to get this right here, okay? So what's the scripture? We know it well. Do not be what? Unequally yoked with unbelievers. Now this is not just with marriage. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. <laughs> For what? Let me see. What fellowship or what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? So you go, well, is it really that important? The Bible seems to think so. That it says, don't be unequally yoked with unbelievers. So you go, really, I'm not supposed to be hanging out with that? I'm just giving you Bible, guys. Let's look at harmonic resonance. How many musicians do we have? Just a few. That's, I need some male singers. Come on. So I was saying, John, explain all this to me. And he got in the whole theory. I'm like, never mind, babe. That Chicago Conservatory of Music, right? So, harmonic resonance, he was telling me, like if on one guitar you play an E string, 
then it resonates with another guitar. And he was saying that guitar can even play, I'm not gonna do nearly as good as you, John, so that guitar, if you play that, or a bass and you play that, and you put your foot, am I doing good? You put your foot on the pedal, right? Then it even resonates through a piano. So a bass and a piano aren't even the same instrument. Think about the comparison. But harmonic resonance is that that guitar will play the same, it'll resonate through this other guitar. And that bass will even resonate through a piano. So what God is saying is those frequencies will play through the same thing. When you get around a person, whatever's in them, their frequencies, come on, your frequencies are going to resonate, whether they're God frequencies or not God frequencies. We have resonate. We resonate with one another. I promise you, look, I've pastored for a long time, big churches, small churches, and everything in between. And it's very interesting to me, Elder, you can have 20,000 people in a church. And it'd be huge. You have a person over here that's got a serious spirit of perversion. A person over here, serious spirit. They're a serial adulterer. They're a serial perverted situation. A person over here, a person over here, a person back there. Within months, those three will be together. Those three will be together. You'll see it. You'll have a person that, that is a gossiper over here, a gossiper back there, and a church that's got 20,000 people. And within months, those three will be together. You get a person over here that is a prayer person, person over there is prayer, person over here is prayer, they'll be together. It, it never ceases to amaze me how much in this massive group of people, they find each other. They seemingly have nothing in common. They seemingly are, are not alike, but they will absolutely connect and find one another. Why? They're resonating. They're resonating. Come on, their E is sending a signal off to their E. They're resonating. And, and spiritually, it's very similar. That whatever you are around, you will become. Henry Drummond said that men are all mosaics of other men. That you become the product of the five people that you hang around. All right, so let's keep going because I know you're going through your list right now and thinking, who am I around? Ask yourself. Contact creates connection. Now. What Paula said Jonathan Cain called resonance, that sounds very similar to what Ginger Baker described. She said this thing gets into all three of their instruments. Now she was the drummer. I don't know what the other instruments were, but it got into all three of them. And she said that same thing was playing all their instruments. She said it was frightening. See, that's those demonic spirits. And did you hear that witchy music that Jonathan was playing in the background? As Paula was talking about resonance. And he says he doesn't know where it comes from. Yeah, I know where it comes from. It certainly did not come from the creator of all the universes. And did you hear Paula talking about being unequally yoked? And then she read the scriptures. See, she knows. She knows. She's a hypocrite, a religious con, and a wolf in sheep's clothing. See, she said, she read the scriptures that said, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. What fellowship hath righteousness with lawlessness? That translation said lawlessness. That's the same word that they used to speak about rock music. They said, the rock beat is Satan's sound of lawlessness. And Paula claims that Jonathan is anointed and a Christian. So why is he yoked with lawlessness? Now I'm going to read a couple more of these statements and then I'm going to move on. This is another statement. Angus Young, lead guitarist for ACDC, is called the Guitar Demon. And he admitted that something takes control of the band, see, the whole band, during their concerts. It's like I'm on automatic pilot. By the time we're halfway through the first number, someone else is steering me. I'm just along for the ride. I become possessed when I get on stage. Hit Parader, July 1985, page 60. Let's go to another statement. I was directed and commanded by another power, the power of darkness, 
that a lot of people don't believe exists. The power of the devil, Satan. That was Little Richard, cited by Charles White, The Life and Times of Little Richard, page 206. Led Zeppelin from the song Houses of the Holy. See, see, you see what I mean? You can tell they're blaspheming on purpose. They're, they're mocking Christianity on purpose. From the song Houses of the Holy. This is what he said. Let the music be your master. Won't you heed the master's call, O Satan? See, all these rock people. Talking about Satan, uh, talking about the devil, something possessed them, something took them over. They just start writing music. Now listen to this very carefully, people. Jimi Hendrix once said, I can explain everything better through music. Now these three words are in all caps. You hypnotize people. And when you get people at their weakest point, you can preach into the subconscious what we want to say. That's why the name Electric Church flashes in and out. I guess that when he was having his uh, whatever, he was flashing that those words, Electric Church, whatever, I guess. I'm not sure. But that's why the, the name Electric Church flashes in and out. See, he said they hypnotize people. And that's what I said. They act like they're mesmerized. And they are. They're, they're being put up under a witchcraft spell. Music is very powerful. They're bewitching the people. Galatians chapter 3 verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? And that's exactly what they do in the churches today. They play worldly music, calling it Christian. They have disco lights going, fake fog all in the sanctuary. All that stuff is, is demonic. And it's putting these people under a witchcraft spell. They're putting them in some type of hypnotic state, just like Jimmy said. While the people are still uh, hypnotized, hyped up on the music, then they start asking for money, too. That's when you'll, you'll see them do it all the time. Watch when, 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 when this Unleashed conference come up. Watch them. Now, they might try and jump and change now because I've outed them, you see. I've already exposed them. I've already told the people what's going to happen. So now they might try and jump and change and pretend like they're oh so godly and, 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 and tone it down, you see. But you see it all the time. The Bible makes it very clear that a battle line has been drawn between two kingdoms and two different realms. There is the kingdom of God, which is the kingdom of light and revelation and righteousness. And there is the kingdom of the devil, which is the kingdom of darkness and wickedness. God does not like things of mixture. God does not. He is a, he is a separated God. Separate yourself from the world. Separate yourself. He doesn't mix. Now I'm going to read this last statement and this will be the end of part two of Hypocrites. Similarly, media and government pretend to stamp out child predators while at the same time promoting rock groups that encourage children to have sex. Dr. Henry Macau, Ph.D., Illuminati II, Deceit and Seduction, page 99. The article goes on to read, Crosby of Crosby, Stills, and Nash made that plain enough when he bragged. Now he's quoting Crosby of Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I figured that the only thing to do was steal their kids. I still think it's the only thing to do. I'm not talking about kidnapping, but about changing young people's value system. See, there you have it. Stealing your children through rock music. Every knowledgeable musician knows that the term rock really means a shameful act of lust. The rock beat is Satan's sound of lawlessness. The rock beat is musical perversion. Rap music also is Satan's sound of lawlessness. It's musical perversion. The devil is stealing your children through rock and rap music. And there's no such thing as Christian rock and Christian rap. I'll repeat it again and again and again. No such thing. This is the end of part two of Hypocrites.